Hi guys, Ryder Kick here, bringing you a three-part special on how to play UFS. UFS stands for Universal Fighting System and encompasses some of the most popular fighting games to date. This game encompasses a total of five different types of cards. We have the character card, which is what your deck is primarily going to be based around, be it the character, the hand size, the health, and the symbols. We also have actions, which uh, dictate a certain event in the course of the battle. Attacks, which are of course meant to deal damage. Foundations, which give ability, which give attacks and other effects in the game, either positive or negative effects, depending if you're attacking or defending. And assets, which are a personal item, person, place, or pet, depending on the character. Now, we're going to actually look at these separately. First, we're going to look at Kyo. Kyo, as you can see, is six hand size. This means this number here dictates the number of uh, number of cards you will draw up at the beginning of every turn, every time it's your turn. Your health is dictated here in this little circle, which tells you how long you got before you're knocked out. This stat box below tells the character's height, weight, gender, and blood type. Now, there are various cards in the course of UFS that actually do look at this box. The most notably, Dmitry Maximoff of the Darkstalkers looks at the blood type. There are foundations and uh, actions that will look at your character's gender, height, and weight. Also, in the character card, you will see there are three symbols. There's the, there are a total of 12 elemental symbols in the game. Kyo is running off of air chaos and fire. Now the fire is symbol is what this deck is based around so we'll get into that maybe another time or if you've already seen the video you know what this deck already has in it. Now every, car now, every card in UFS has two other numbers in there. It has a difficulty and it has a control check. Both the difficulty and control check for most characters. Now there are exceptions most characters have a difficulty of 6 and a control check of 6. There are some notable uh, differences, the uh, discrepancies in this though. Um, all cards have a, all cards will always have a difficulty and a control. There is another card symbol up here and that is known as a block modifier. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, there are two zones of play in this game. There is the bottom, and imagine that this playmat is split in half. Down the middle, long thing. The top part of the uh, mat is your zone of play. The zone of play has several different inner zones in it, known as the areas of progressive difficulty. All cards, as you play, get progressively harder by a uh, number of one. Your first card you put into play over in... Whichever in the top zone is always going to be played for free with no added difficulty to it. Then the next card you play will get added to plus one. Then plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, and so on. During your end turn, or during any time you fail to pass a control check and your turn ends, you will move your cards from the top to the bottom. Now this only works for foundations and assets. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to play, let me grab a foundation. We're going to play this. It's called Nursing a Grudge. It has a difficulty of two. So we're going to remove the top card of our deck and put it into our KO pile after we look at the bottom number on the card, which is known as the control check. The control check must be equal to or greater than the difficulty of the card. In this case, it's a three. So I've passed my control check so I can keep on going. Let's go ahead and play another card. Now the next card will get plus one to its difficulty. So this attack is uh, has a one difficulty, but since it's in a plus one spot, it'll be, we need to make a control check of two or greater. So let's go ahead and check that next card. It's also a three. So we will keep on going. Next we play the boot. The boot is four difficulty. So when we play it after the flash lightning here, it's going to get plus two to its difficulty. So that means I need to make a control check of six or better. Now, I flip the top card of my card deck. You can see the control check is three. Now, that means that I have failed my control check. 
So my turn ends there. Anything that does not pass is immediately discarded. Anything that does pass, if it is a foundation, goes down to what is known as the staging area, where the foundations and assets become active. Any attack that actually deals damage will go to another area of play known as the momentum pile. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, I have nursing a grudge in the staging area. Let me zoom out here real quick, that way you guys can see this. So this is in the staging area. Now, it's my turn again, so I'm going to try and play the boot again. Now, I have to make a control check of five or greater, of four. So again, I check a five. Let's go ahead and play uh, Frischer Hemmel. Again, it's after the boot, so it gets plus one to its difficulty, meaning i got to check a three or better. Again, I check a three, so that makes it being able to be played. Okay, so now I'm going to play Z Maze Wheel Kick, and this is at a difficulty of plus four, or excuse me, a difficulty of plus two, meaning I have to make a control check of five. Now, we have Kyo down here in the staging area, and we have Nursing a Grudge in the staging area. Now, we make a control check, it's a three. So that means normally it wouldn't pass. However, at the sacrifice of being able not to use its ability, we can tap that foundation to give that check plus one, meaning I checked a four. In the event you want to, you can also commit a character card, and it will also give your control check a plus one bonus, meaning I checked a five. So that means Z Maze Wheel Kick was successful. Now, at the end of the turn, we will again clear the card pool. We won't do anything with momentum just yet. I'll go into that a little bit later. Now, much like asset foundations, assets also go into the staging area to be used at a later time. However, assets cannot be committed to give additional bonuses to ch your control checks. They do serve other purposes, and they are primarily for their effects. So again, Characters and, founda characters and foundations can be committed to give a plus one bonus to your control check. Assets, however, cannot. Okay, now that we've gone through that, let's actually look at other zones of play. Your character card usually sits anywhere from around your deck, atop your deck, or beside your deck. There's a zone also beside your character known as the momentum pile. Momentum can be achieved by making a t an attack successfully deal damage. Now, you have various elements that come into play into this. You have various zones, and you have to deal, look at the card. So we're going to look at Zemei's Will Kick. Now, we've established that Zemei has a, Zemei's Will Kick has a difficulty of 3 and a control check of 3. However, you see these two symbols here. This top circular number in red is a the speed of the attack. This is how quick the attack is coming at it. And the starburst down here is how much damage it deals. There are three zones of play for each attack. There's highs, which are noted in red, mids, which are orange, and lows, which are yellow. Now, there's also a uh, spot up here, which I touched on earlier, called the block modifier. The block modifier is also much like the speed zone, speed modifier, in that it also shares highs, mediums, and lows. Now, while we will get into blocks in a little bit in this video, I will tell you this. Highs cannot block lows, and lows cannot block highs. Mids can block anything. Now, with that being said, we will look at uh, it being played. So Zemu's Will Kick was played, and it was has two, damage, two speed and one damage. Now, let's say you this hit the opponent. During the end phase, after you've played all the cards you wish to and wish to end your turn, any damage attacks that, go, that have dealt damage come from the card pool and go face down anywhere beside your character. Momentum is used to pay for various effects that we will talk about in video two. 
Video 1 right now, we will still consider uh, zones of gameplay. We also have a remove from game zone. That's really generally anywhere you feel like. Uh, the remove from game zone comes into play when you cycle your deck. Unlike most games, uh, UFS does not end when you deck out. When you deck out, you take your discard pile, you uh, remove the top ten cards of your deck, and completely remove them from the game, and your deck starts over again. Only when your entire deck is in the remove from game pile are you considered, uh, does is the game over for you, and you lose. There are various decks that do that, but they're not very common. So, again, we have, just to go over again, we have the zone of play. We have the staging area down here. We have our character zone. We have the momentum zone. And we have the deck zone, which can go anywhere based on player preference. That's all we have right now for this video for zones of play. Uh, there will be other videos later on with better detailing. I plan on getting a demo mat to make it a little bit easier to understand. But again, just to recall, the uh, in-play zone has a progressive difficulty starting at 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and so on. Every time you play a card, the difficulty, which is in the top left corner, this little star right there, or shuriken, or glaive, or knife, or whatever you want to call it, that little mark right there will go up by one every time you play a card. So if I was to play it in the plus zero spot, it's a plus four, it's a four difficulty. I play it in the plus one spot, it's a five difficulty, and so on, and so on, and so on. After you end your turn via ending it or, or failing a control check, all cards, uh, all foundations and assets that were played successfully go into your staging area. Attacks that have dealt damage go into your momentum. Anything that fails and does a, and ends your turn immediately goes to the discard pile. Now, we have talked about this, and this is your, again, this is Keo, so this number still does represent your hand size. At the beginning of every, every one in time of your turn, at the start of your turn during your draw phase, you will draw up to your hand size. We will get more in detail into that in video three, where we will actually sit down and play a demo. So thanks so much for learning the first part of UFS. Join me here in part two, where we talk about keywords.